the rot. It's all I can see anymore. You would think there w has to be some place to escape it, or at least some place where it wasn't all around me. But there isn't. Not on this world. Not in this universe. It makes a sound, you know, rot. Rotting is dry and raspy. It's the sound of sound when sound starts to end. You think it fades? It does not. At the moment the vibration ends, it rots. It decomposes into nothingness. You want to argue? You want to use science to prove me wrong? Use science against me? Me? No, sorry. It's a rod. It's inside of me, you see. Oh, it's in you, too. You just can't see it. Or hear it. Goddess. That sound... Sound is maddening. It's my own fault, of course. I asked him to do it. I wanted to understand. That's my curse. I always have to try and understand everything. But... There are reasons... That some things are not meant to be known to us. We are limited, you see, our minds. Our minds aren't large enough. We are too sane. Well, some of us are. Were. I'm working on it. It started innocently enough. He came with us on our picnic. By then, we were used to him tagging along. He had it bad for Fluttershy. And we all knew it, including her. If it was any of the rest of us, it might have been a problem. Not so much because of his looks, but his personality. When he really got going, he made even Pinkie Pie look tame. By comparison, honestly, I don't know why she puts up with it, but it was her business. Anyway, it was a pretty standard picnic. We all sat out in the field, ate Chatter together, Rainbow Dash and Applejack, playing games, Pinkie Pie, Rarity, working on an embroidery, while Spike just sat there watching her. I don't know how long she intends to keep this up. She told me once that she finds all the attention flattering, but that she is going to let him know that when the moment is right. It must be a tricky thing because it's been going on for four years now. I'm starting to wonder if Spike might actually wear her down. Maybe he does have a chance. He better hurry before the rot gets her. So, while all that was going on, Discord was showing Fluttershy his latest bags of tricks. I had been trying to read, but they were sitting next to me under the shady tree, and Discord was in his loud mode. Probably just because I was trying to read. So, being left with no options, I decided to watch. It was maddening. He just does whatever he wants, whatever occurs to him, at any given moment. No spells that took years to master, no strain calling upon unseen forces and bending them to his will, no preparation, no effect, no cost to him at all. He just snapped his claws, and there it was. Poof. Cosmic rules that govern the very nature of the universe. He breaks those. He breaks those just by making breakfast. Now don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm jealous or anything. I mean, just because I am the element of magic, and I'm forced to watch him be bring impossibilities into existence right before my eyes. That I will never in a hundred lifetimes be able to do it myself. All right, perhaps I was a little jealous. I hate the way you just do that. I didn't mean to say that. It just slipped out, of, out under my breath, but of course he heard it. Why, whatever do you mean, my dear Twilight? Float effortlessly through the air, always knowing just what to say? Or could you mean this? He said, snapping his, his claws effortlessly, an entire free ring circus to appear in midair, all being run by chipmunks. Admittedly, the lion tamer was quite impressive. Yes, that! I said in irritation as he snapped it all away. 
It hurts my brains. You just snap up anything you want with no effort, no cost. Magic isn't like that. And yet you do it anyway. It doesn't make sense. I expected a standard. It's chaos. It does it isn't supposed to make sense, type of reply. But instead, he surprised me. Oh Twilight. You are very you are so very wrong, and yet, for once, you are very right as well. Huh? I said, my thoughts derailed. I was right? Wh what do you mean? Well, you are wrong in supposing that I was using magic to power what I do. I do not. But you are right in that there is a cost. There is always a cost, my dear. You just cannot perceive it with your limited pony sense. I knew I was setting myself up for a burn. I was just too curious not to ask. Could you explain it to me? Why, of course, my dear, but not just now. It's too much of a beautiful day to waste on such trivial matters. And I'm sure my dear Fluttershy would be bored to tears. Why don't you drop me just relax and enjoy today? And I'll pop by lunch. I'll pop up by lunch tomorrow. And let you know all about it. Sounds good. Was there a catch? Didn't there, there almost have to be with him? But he agreed to, agreed in front of Fluttershy, and she wouldn't would certainly call him out on, if he lied to me. I forced a broad smile onto my muzzle. Sure, that sounds good. Sure, that sounds great. Another cucumber sandwich? I offered a gesture of goodwill. How delightful, thank you ever so much, he said, accepting the sandwich from my magic with whatever he used as his own, and taken a daintly bite from it midair. The rest of the afternoon was uneventful. I suppose we had fun. I must admit I was distracted by the thoughts of finally understanding how Discord works. Aside from Pinkie Pie, it was one of the few things that had bothered me the most. I barely slept at all that night, and didn't even bother with breakfast, which turned out to be my biggest mistake. As I got out of a fresh supply of quill and ink and parchment from the basement, I planned to document every, each and every word so I could pour over it for every yacht of hidden meaning that I just knew he was going to try and sneak by me. Yes, he did promise to tell me the me mechanics of how he could perform the, his tricks, but that didn't mean he had to tell me in a way I would understand. No, I was ready for him to try and trick me. Could I have been more wrong? Promptly, I knew at noon he appeared. I was waiting for him in the study as he poofed in out of midair, into a comfy chair just opposite me. I never asked how he always knew where I w we all were. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't like the answer. So, he asked, rubbing his claws together expectantly, what's for lunch? Um, I was hoping we could have our talk first, but afterwards, we can have anything you want to eat, my treat. Although I was getting hungry after skipping breakfast, I didn't want to distract until I learned whatever I could. Who knew when Discord would ever decide to be so forthcoming again? Ah, well, as tempting as that sounds, I really do think we should eat something before we begin. It could be a while before you wa you'll want to, to dine again once we finish our discussion while we'll probably be a bit involved he was stalling i didn't know why but that was the impression i got well i wasn't going to let my hunger distract me oh i'm sure i'll be fine now then you were going to explain to me how you do what you do Discord's face lost its jovility. 
Suddenly, he looked seriously, almost sad. Were his secrets so personal to him? Was that it? Twilight, as a cosmical, powerful entity, I don't, un I don't consider myself bound by time and space. I can see more of the Great Tapestry than even Celestia and Luna. I learn, I knew that today would come. I knew we would have our little talk, but right here, right now, I'm giving you a chance to change your mind, to just forget all about it and go see about lunch. I'm saying this, Twilight, as a friend. Because once you learn the information you are after, then you can never unlearn it. It will stay with you forever. He sits there, looking at me with what appeared to be a, with complete and utter honesty and sincerity. Ha! I knew it. He was trying to get me to let him off the hook. He can just go back to Fluttershy and tell her I changed my mind, and if I bring it up again later, he'll just say, You had your chance. Nice try, Discord, but no luck. Well, I really appreciate your concern, but... I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to learn more about one of the most en enigmatic friend, could I? No, he said sadly. I suppose you couldn't. He snapped his claws, and suddenly we were... I have no idea. I see energy flash off of... I don't know what... Some type of orb that is rapidly disintegrating. The colors... Isn't anything I can describe. And there's a loud roaring sound. A horrible sound. A sound that ever feel... A sound that every fiber of my being finds abhorrent. It's a sound, I think. Uh, that's the worst of it. Not the smell, not even the sight. Although, that is horrible enough. The sound. Nothing could be more able to make a sound like that. Wouldn't you agree? He asked me, casually glancing my way. I nodded. It's all I can do. He couldn't hear me over the cataphony. Even if I screamed, how was I able to hear him then? I want you to close your eyes, Twilight. I'm about to take it, us back, but I want you to keep your eyes closed until I finish my explanations, alright? Right now I had to agree to anything just to make the sound stop. I nodded once more. I squeezed my eyes. I squeezed my eyes shut tightly. A moment later, the sound stopped. On reflex, I attempted to open my eyes, but I find I can't. Ah, uh, I didn't think you'd be able to fight your instincts, but that's all right. I've sealed them shut for you, don't worry. I'll unstick them as soon as I finish my spiel. I can feel that I'm back in my chair. It's even still warm. I have no idea how long we were. Wherever we were. Wherever that was. But I couldn't have been very long. Now, the first part of my explanation is... Now, the first ex part of my explanation has to do with where we were just at. I assume you understand what we were seeing. Um, well, not exactly. I admit it to my personal shame. Tisk tisk, such a barbaric world I chose to live on. We were viewing the radioactivity decaying of Carbon-14 in the upper atmosphere of Equestria. It was supposed to be the simplest way to explain this to you. Obviously, I'll need to dumb it this way, way down. Now, he was just, was being mean, which is better than him being mopey, I guess. Simply put it, Twilight, I use the energy of the entropy, decaying rot. That chair you are sitting in, even as we speak, is rotting away, tiny bits of itself breaking down into smaller and smaller components. 
releasing just the tiniest bit of energy each time as as it does where does my power come from all around you everything every thing every pony the grass the trees the sun in the sky everything rots power of decay so you have some way of detecting the energy and controlling it using it i say reeling at the implications of his words an almost infinite power source no wonder he can do anything can this be taught can others learn it you mean can you learn it isn't that what you were really trying to say he set his voice and is over my shoulders he knows what my reply is going to be yes i admitted but not just for myself i added quickly think of all the good i could do for Equestria. I'd use my power to help ponies, not just squander it by making rain, chocolate rain, cotton candy clouds. I'd use it for the sake of the world. Oh, is that what you'd f do, is it? You think I'm squandering my power, foolish pony. I'm saving the planet every time I snap my claws. He was getting angry. I'm not sure why. All I've told him was the truth. Actually, I've spared him from the worst part. Personally, I see him as some kind of powerful clown, just snapping his immortal life away. He could be doing so much more. He could turn Equestria into a utopia. He's worse than a clown. He's an irresponsible god. Well now, you've gone and hurt my feelings. He said, sounding more angry than hurt. I know I didn't speak just now. He's reading my mind. Well, of course I am. Everyone's really. I need something to drown out the sound. But you'll have to deal with that soon enough. Now bear with me as I finish my explanations. And then... We can finally get the unpleasant business over with. Right then. So many. So you think I... Right then. So you think I'm wasting my power, do you? Well, I think it's about time I educate you with a little... You... A little on the nature of the universe. The universe, my dear Miss Sparkle, wants to die. No, I'm not exaggerating, nor am I being a little bit melodramatic. There are two great forces in all of existence that is, are constantly at odds with each other. Order and chaos. You, with your science and your books, you think that order is a good thing, don't you? Fuck. Do you know what order strives for? What its end game is? Nothingness. A vast emptiness, empty void of pure nothingness, pure, perfect, absolute order. And do you know what order wants, my dear, deluded twilight? Life. Life in its infinite diversity. Chaos is creation. Creation with the joyous of it abandoned. With wild, joyous, abandoned. Chaos is fought. Imaginations, introverse, venia, venius, inventiveness, inventiveness. You, my dear Twilight, are more of a creature of chaos than you were ever were of order. As are all of your friends, especially Pinkie Pie. But for everything chaos creates, order is there to break it down. Orders, pools, and tugs at everything that isn't pure void, corrupting it, leaching energy from it, causing it to weather and die, causing each little molecule to separate back into its orderly little component, comp components, smaller and smaller until nothing remains. But, ah, uh, but there were... That's where I come from. I steal the energy, releasing from the rotting creation, rotting of creation. 
I bring new sayings into being. But most importantly, I keep that energy from being lost to the void. Lost to the void? Why? Why is that important? I asked, trying to keep up with what he was telling me. Because, he said, sounding like he was about to say something really clever that I should have already figured out. Matter and energy are the same thing. One becomes the other. Back and forth, back and forth, yin and yang, over and over. Matter doesn't even really, cannot even really be destroyed. It just gets converted into energy. But even energy is unwelcomed in order. Perfect order is sameness. Neither one nor the other. There are things out there, Twilight. Sayings in the depths of space. Black holes that suck in both matter and energy. Cosmic vacuums. Cleaners that gravitate so immensely strong as to be able to suck in light itself. Every bit of energy I use keeps it here in our, on this world, in this universe. You have no idea what I do when I'm not taking time off to spend with you and your friends. I create worlds, suns, stars, comets, anything and everything I can imagine. My time spent with you ponies calls those my weekends off and vacations. Trust me, my dear, my work week is spent to keep the universe from falling into the blackest order, and all without so much as a single thank you. But, but, if all of this is true, then why don't you ever say anything about it? Why do you pretend to be this insane mad pony, randomly trolling all of Equestria? Ah, oh, well you see, Twilight, that's the thing. I'm not pretending. Has the room suddenly gotten colder? Why am I suddenly shaking? Oh, those are merely your new perceptions, my dear. Discord says right next to my ear. Your body is reacting to the menacing aura. I am currently projecting. No worries though, just a test just to make sure that everything is functioning properly. There's kind of a saying, these kinds of sayings are very tricky, it's not an easy thing to fine tune. Another being's percept perception, what, what do you mean, what, what are you, what have you done? I say, still shaking, and beginning to feel the slightest twinge of panic. What have I done? Why, well, I've given you what you wanted. You wanted to be able to perceive the energy I was talking about. You hoped that I would give you the means to control it like I do. And so I have. Once you open your eyes, you'll understand everything. As for controlling it, well... That'll take both time and effort, but since you are immortal like Celestia and Luna, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it... eventually. And with that... And with that, my work is done. Don't worry about lunch. I'll take a rain check and tell you the next time you feel hungry. And don't worry about seeing my, me out. Get it? Seeing? <laughs> uh, well, never mind. Enjoy your newfound knowledge, Twilight. I hope, for your sake, it was worth it. I hear a snap, and suddenly my body stops shaking. He must have left. I can feel my eyelids come unstuck. I can open them once more. I do so. That was a mistake. My screams echoed across the corridors of the castle. It's quickly following my, by another, and another. I can't help myself. It's everywhere, everywhere. Twilight, what's wrong? What is wrong? What's wrong? It's Spike. He's come to see me. What's happening to me? Unfortunately, he can't see it, and the sight of him makes me nearly vomit. Oh, Goddess, he's so disgusting. Everything. 
everywhere. It's all around me. I close my eyes. That helps. They're goddess. I may never open them again, but I can hear it all now, now as well. The sound. That horrible, abhorrent sound. The sa same sound when Discord took me away to that dry, raspy sound. I know what it is now. I can see it. I can hear it. Rot. Everything all around me. The furniture. The candles. The books. Even Spike. <laughs> oh, goddess. I'll never get the image out of my mind. I can see the rot in all of them. Rotting everything before me. Spike's little ball of energy of light. Getting smaller and smaller. All the while he's... His body is being constantly consumed, eaten away by all of those things. He's just standing there, oblivious, horrible, hideous. Oh, goddess. I understand now. Escort, he wasn't... He isn't acting like a fool. He isn't pretending to be crazy at all. An immortal like himself, having to see this every day? Hearing this whisper every single minute? Of course he's insane. Any being would be. And and he gave me the chance to change my mind. He cares about me. And about all of us. We were all so wrong about him. Twilight, Twilight. Tell me, what do you need? Should I send a letter to the princess? Go get sun, starlight glimmer? Twilight. You have to answer me, oh Spike. Even the sound from your voice is rotting away. It does- it makes no sense. Sounds can't rot, but that's what my perceptions are telling me. Is that real or did Discord make a mistake? He said tuning my perspective was, would be tricky. I'm- I'm okay, Spike. Discord just showed me something unexpected is all. I just need a little time to come to terms with it. Send a letter to Celestia. Tell her I need her as fast as she could get here. And call Starlight. Have her come inside. Don't let any pony n else know. Not until I talk to Starlight and Celestia first. Of course, Twilight. I'll take care of it right now. Is there anything else? I can do for you until they get here. Something to drink or eat? Yes. Yes, too, both. Spike, I haven't eaten since last night. And also, if you can, bring me a red scarf. I I need a bl to make a blindfold. My eyes are a bit too sensitive to light at the moment. Yeah, okay. I'll be right back. I hear, hear him running down the corridors. He's worried. I should... I should be Tartarus. I should be in full panic mode, but I feel almost calm. I think I've just gone so far past fear that I'm out the other side. I take a deep breath and let it out, and I open my eyes again. I clench my teeth together to keep from screaming again. I thought I was ready for it this time. I wasn't. It's so... It's just so disgusting. I can see it. Everything. The books are rotting on the shelves. The chairs I'm sitting on is rotten under my hooves. Little bits of it sticking to my body. Oddly enough, my body is the only thing that isn't rotting. I'm not being eaten alive. It's just... It must be the immortality. The magic. Wait. That's it. Magic. The prese preservation spell. I can cast all over the room, over the whole castle. Spike, or Twilight, Spike told me, you need to see me. I turned when she spoke. I looked at her. Ah! I wailed, clamping my eyes shut. Twilight, what's wrong? She says, coming over and holding my shoulder. She's touching me. Oh God, is she touching me? I shove her away violently, wiping my hooves on my arms in the chair. Please, Starlight, 
just don't go near me. We need to talk, but please, just don't touch me. I don't understand, but... Alright, please, tell me what's going on. I spent the next few minutes explaining what hap has happened. Like me, she was keen interested in Discord's ability. That is, until I began explaining what I was able to see and hear now. I see, and am I really so disgusting to look at? She asked, with hurt in her voice. No, Starlight, it isn't you that's abhorrible, abhorrent. It's what I saw, see happening to you. The skin on your face peeling away, your hair, the spiders, all the little creatures crawling all over you, eating every little bit of dead flesh. And they turn, they in turn die, rotten away. It's all over you and your body every sec. That's enough! Starlight says sharply. I understand, I get it. Let's just, just not talk about the it, okay? Fine by me, I reply. I don't even want to think about it. I agree, so... What's all... What are we going to do about it? As far as I'm... Condi as far as my condition, I don't think there's anything we can do about it. Or at least that's what Discord says. He told me if I choose this, there is no way I could ever undo it. He even gave me a chance to change my mind. You can't be con possibly considering letting him off the hook. He didn't tell you what you'd be in for before he did this. There is no way he could have ever agreed to do this knowing what would happen. Well, I replied, replied slowly, considering my words, that's not exactly true. You can't be serious. To get a chance to learn to do what Discord does, to someday be as powerful as he is, Think of what I could accomplish. Listen to what you're saying. You think what? Get used to this? Get used to seeing everything rot away every minute of every day? To not be able to look at any pony without seeing them being in the way before your eyes? You're saying you'll get used to that? I know, yes, I don't know. Discord does it. He's a Clement, I offered lamely. Discord is insane. He's totally and completely insane! And now we know why. Is that what you want to, your future to be? No, I... Of course not. But it's not... doesn't have to be that way. If I can control this, just for a little while, while if I can master Discord's power, I can change this world for the better. Then if there is a way to turn me back to normal, we will. Starlight was hesitant. She can't, isn't convinced I can hold it together. Look, all I need is a haven, a place where I can keep my sanity. I had already come up with an idea. You came in. Listen, we can use a preservation spell all over the castle. We can keep it all from rotting. That way, as long as I'm in the castle, it won't get it to me. You'll be pre making a lot of assumption here, Twilight. What about your friends? What about, what about, what about if when you have to leave the castle, you can't exactly stay in here forever? I was able to offer another argument, but our conversation was interrupted. Twilight, I'm back. I sent a letter to, the, to Celestia. She'll be here within the hour. In the meantime, I threw together a lunch for you, salad with a mix of greens, a nice ripe pilaf, and the last of the broccoli car casser casserole. You, you like so much. I also made some fresh green tea. If there is anything I can get you, get for you, just say the word. Thanks, Spike. Actually, if you could do me a favor, take Starlight down to the library, show her my section of section on preservation spells. If you, you could give her a hoof carrying them, what she thinks will be the best. We may need more than one type for what I have in mind. Sure saying, Twilight. I can hear him hesitant at the door. Um, you know, you can tell me anything. I get, right? Um, you know you can tell me anything, right? I 
escape that something is going on, that scream, the way you won't turn towards me, I understand that it's something you can't, you aren't ready to tell me. Spike has always been loyal to me, and now I can't look him in the eye. Spike, it isn't like that. I just need a bit of time to come up to terms with things. I gave Starlight the gift of it. She can fill you in on the way while you help her with the finding the books. Really, I'm not trying to keep you out of the loop. It's just the saying, all things, kind of suddenly. I'm, I'm still trying to f wrap it around my head. That's all, okay? Yeah, okay. If you say so. The scarf you wanted is on the right side of the tray. Call me if you need anything. Thank you, Spike. You're always good to me. That's why you're my number one assistant, I say, trying to force some cheer into my voice. I suppose it worked because they leave without further complaints. I'm glad they did. I just, I was about to have to do something nightmarish. I was gonna have to eat. I realized the moment I saw Spike why Discord had me. Wanted me to eat something earlier, but of course I turned him down. Now I was going to have to pay the price. My stomach was growling loud enough to be heard. My frantic behavior since Discord's altered my perception, has only need, only used up more of my energy. In short, I was starving, I needed to eat, but I knew instinctively that there was no way I was going to be able to choke down any of the food Spike prepared if I had to see it first. If a leave it, living, breathing Spike looked that horrible, I didn't want to imagine what a day-old broccoli casserole looked like. I was going to have to do this blindfolded. It took me a second to find the scarf Spike had left me. I fa quickly fashioned it into a makeshift blindfold out of it and tried to it around my head. Then I felt around until I found my fork in one of the three bowls. The one I found didn't seem very heavy, so I guessed it was the salad. I stuck the fork into the bowl and lifted the contents to my mouth. The stench was overwhelming. I quickly held the fork so as far away from me as I could. Apparently Discord didn't just use his power on my sight. He offlocated my s He offlocated my senses were obviously heightened as well. This could be a problem. I held my hoof sideways across my mouth, attempting to cover both nostrils. The fork towards my mouth. I could still faintly smell the rot when I quickly shoved the first bite in my mouth. I more than half expected the taste buds were altered, but fortunately, they were still the same. The taste of salad, very good salad. My mouth completely contradicted that my nose had been telling me, Oh, thank goddess. I mumbled around another. A mouthful of greens. At least I was able to eat, even though I couldn't stand the smell of it or, doubtless, the sight. I spent the next ten minutes, or so, gre so greedily, devouring everything on this tray and giz guzzling all the tea. After the last bite was taken, I sat back in my chair and contently sighed. Now that I had f was fed, my hungry pangs and headaches had receded. I was feeling a great deal more optimistic. I can make this work. Sure, it wasn't going to be easy. I had a lot to make up for. I have to make a lot of alterations to my daily routine. But if I can master this, and once I conditioned myself, once I got myself to the new scenery, then I could learn to master and control this rot energy. If any pony on a quest you could do it, it was me. I would master it. I would become a powerful, as powerful as Discord. I would change the world for the better. Ugh, good. Good thing no pony heard me, heard me burp like that. I must have been star- Oh, sweet Celestia. Oh, goddess, no, no, no. Ugh. Oh, goddess, my stomach. The stench from that burp. Burp of the rot. Oh, goddess, the rot is inside- was inside me, of course. That made me puke. 
Of course, the smell from the puke that made me puke more and more. Oh, goddess, I had to get out of the room. The smell beyond rip plant. No use. I'll have to take the blindfold off. Don't look down. Just don't look down. Look straight ahead, no farther. No, not until you get out of the room. Okay, okay, ready? Now go. I removed the blindfold and opened my eyes. The rock was all around me, everywhere. I carefully avoided looking at the tray or anything below, but I carefully pushed it away from me. Now looking at my hooves, it had been touching. I resisted the urge to wipe them on my chest. I slowly lowered a hoof to the floor. Silently thinking Celestia that it didn't go squish. Then I slowly tw lowered the other one and made a careful way around the edge of the room until I got to the other one and made my way carefully around the edge of the room until I got to the door and ignited my horn and used its magic to open it the outer s hallway. If only I had been calm enough to simply teleport away. Still, as things were, I barely had the co concentrations to work the knob without touching it. I made my way out of the hall and closed the door behind me. Slowly, I sank to the floor, my back pressed into the door. I covered my eyes with the scarf once more and began silently crying. I have no idea how long I stayed there that way before Celestia had found me. 